and and that's why we uh, designed HSK as the native token and guest token for the layer two blockchain. Uh, HSK's dual uh, identity is to carefully consider uh, design, and as a ERC twenty token, HSK has fully leveraged the liquidity and infra of the Ethereum ecosystem, and our users can easily trade on mainstream exchanges and interact with. Uh, existing defined protocols and ensuring strong market liquidity and broader ac accessibility. And at the same time, at the, uh, as the native token of layer two, uh, HSK plays a central role on HashQ chain. And beyond paying the gas fee, as I mentioned before, it supports uh, different professional financial applications. Uh, for example, institutional users could stake HSK to participate in the network validation and earn soundable returns. And in scenarios like cross-border payment and asset tokenization, HSK uh, serves as a settlement medium and which is significantly improves the transaction efficiency. And this dual architecture create the unique network effect and at the ecosystem growth, uh, hash keys practical application on layer two generate the real demand while the ERC20 nature ensure that the demand is reflected in the broader market. And this creates a virtual cycle. Uh, more user case attract more users and more users encourage more application development. I believe this uh, design is particularly uh, well suited to the current market environment. On one hand, it meets the uh, traditional institution's need for compliance and professionalism. And on the other hand, it maintains the connections with the broader crypto ecosystem. And this balance is crucial for driving uh, mainstream adoption, as we always talk about. Yeah. Um, from talking more about the tokenomics, I will talk about Hashkey tokens burning mechanism and value sustainability. So the burning mechanism involves using 20% of Hashkey's net profit to buy back Hashkey token. How do you plan to balance liquidity and token scarcity? Yeah, um, our burning mechanism ensures that token supply is controlled uh, while also supporting liquidity needs by using the 20% of Hashkey's net profit to buy back and burn we create a, a uh, deflation pressure on the token and we ensure its long-term value. And that's at the same time, we continue to uh, foster the liquidity through well-planned market making activities and user incentives. And we ensure that the ecosystem remain robust and participants can easily interact with the token. Yeah. Impact the long-term sustainability of the ecosystem. Uh, the yeah the, the burning mechanism promote long-term sustainability by ensuring that HSK supply remains constrained, which is turn supports its value over time. As the hash ecosystem grows and the more users participate, the reduction in total supply will help mitigate inflation pressure, creating an environment where uh, HSK remains its utility and value. This aligns with our broader goal for fostering a, a, a driven and self-sustaining ecosystem. Yeah. What performance metrics or conditions will dictate adjustments to the tokenomics or burning strategy? Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we will monitoring the key performance metrics, such as the transaction volume, the chicken circulation, uh, liquidity levels, of course, and network activity. And adjustment to the tokenomics of burning strategy will be based on this indicators ensuring that the we remain uh, adaptable to the market conditions and could support the ecosystem's growth without compromising token value or utility. Yeah. Next to the adoption and integration of hash key tokens, what steps are you taking to ensure hash key token adoption beyond the hash key ecosystem? Yeah, we have adopted a multiple layer strategy to driven HSK adoption. And first and foremost, we focus on building real use case, relying solely on marketing or hype 
to driven token price is not sustainable for most of the cases. We believe that true value came from solving the real problems. And let me share some uh, specific incentives. Uh, one, on the institutional front, we are collaborating with a traditional financial institution to develop RWA solution. And for example, we are developing tokenization project for MMF, uh, real estate, and precious metals. And these projects will create a natural demand for HSK. And in cross-border payment, we are building a payment network based on HSK. And through partnership with a regional payment service provider, we aim to establish HSK as a efficient cross-border settlement medium. And this is particularly important for trade and payment needs in Asia Pacific region. And for the developers ecosystem, we offer comprehensive support uh, support program beyond tech technical and financial support, we help them to connect with a real business scenario and institutional users. And this approach ensures that development uh, developed project, they could find the genuine market demand. And most importantly, we maintain our compliance first principle as we expand the uh, ecosystem. We ensure all partnerships and applications meets relevant regulatory requirement. And we, we offer the compliance as a service. So while the approach might mean slower growth, but it definitely will ensure the long-term sustainability for all. Yeah. How does HSK token drive the global adoption of digital assets in real world? financial systems? Mm -hmm. uh, HSK contributes to the global adaption by enabling easier and more cost-efficient transactions in the real world and through its utility in stable coins, BTC Fi, and RWA, uh, HSK helps traditional financial system integrate digital markets uh, unlocking the access to decentralized finance while maintaining the stability and the scalability needed for mass adoption. Yeah. The use of HSK tokens in broader blockchain ecosystems? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are actively pursuing partnerships with other blockchain and decentralized platform and the traditional financial institution, of course, to expand the use case of HSK. And this partnership will facilitate cross-platform interoperability and increase the token liquidity and provide more opportunities for users to engage with token in different decentralized financial applications. Thank you. So this will be the last section about regulatory and compliance. As Hashkey token really uh, said a lot of things about regulatory and compliance. How does HSK token comply with the varying regulatory requirements across jurisdictions like Hong Kong, Singapore, and Bermuda. Yeah, it's it's very important to emphasize that actually token it itself are inherently decentralized and botless. However, we recognize that uh, all these regulatory requirements across different jurisdictions, they share the common sense that the goal is to protect the users, individual retail users specifically, uh, to protect their interests. So with this uh, understanding, we are we have implemented very strict standards in terms of information disclosure, mechanism design, and subsequent circulation. And this goes beyond mere, merely uh, compliance. It's about ensuring comprehensive protection for all users' interests, and that this will be our long-term goal and we our, our rules to do everything. Yeah. Terries and compliances to protect users, I think there will be a lot of challenges Ashki has to solve. What challenges do you foresee in achieving a unified economy combining real world and digital assets? Yeah, I guess I might be the perfect one to answer this question because this is like my daily struggle. And we achieving a unified ecosystem, we combine the real world and digital asset, uh, the challenge, but also tremendous opportunities for all of us. And let me and uh, let me give a brief introduction to this. And first, there are infra challenges. Uh, traditional financial system and the blockchain network operate on different technology standard and settlement mechanism. We need to build reliable bridges, connection 
connecting these two worlds. And this is why we are particularly focused on uh, compatibility with the traditional financial ecosystem. And when designing the Hashkey chain, we want to ensure seamless asset flow between both of the system. And second, there are regulatory challenge. Different types of asset are subject to different regulatory frameworks, of course. And when um, to do the tokenization RWA, we need to ensure the process compliance with both traditional finance and digital asset requirement. And this is where Hashkey's strength lies. We have rich, we have a lot of experience and regulatory support in both sides. And the third one is that uh, market education and acceptance. Many traditional institutions remain cautious about blockchain technology. It takes time and the real cases to build confidence. And that's why we are taking the gradual, uh, graduate uh, approach uh, step by step, starting with establishing asset classes and then provide them the models visibility through a successful case. However, these challenges actually reflect market development opportunity. As regulatory frameworks mature and the technology advanced, the tokenization of RWA will bring unacceptable, unpredictable liquidity and efficiency to the market. And we believe we all see the, uh, the, the, the emerging form for this unified ecosystem and they will be uh, in the near future, maybe like the three to five years. Yeah. For Korean market exposure. Yeah. Can you share this reason and your thoughts about the Korean market? Yeah, of course, uh, the Korean market has a really specific uh, strategy significance for us. Uh, the, the data shows that Korea is one of the most active cryptocurrency markets globally and with extremely high digital asset uh, acceptance and sophisticated users, uh, Korean users are highly receptive to new technologies and have strong judgment in identifying qualified projects. And we particularly uh, appreciate several uh, characteristics for the Korean market. And first is the professional quali quality of users. Uh, Korean investors, they are generally have strong research capability. They don't blindly follow market trend and they want to deeply anal analyze project uh, fundamentals. And this align perfectly with our focus for uh, on the long-term value. And secondly, uh, create a sophisticated financial infra. Korea has mature payment system and banking networks. While the government is gradually adopting an open attitude toward, towards the uh, crypto industry. And this provides ex excellent infra support for our development in Korean market. We see strong demand for Korean institutional investors for compliant digital asset trading products as a compliance first institution we Hashki, could provide safe and professional service to Korean users, particularly in RWA tokenization and institutional grade trading services. And our strength aligns well with career market needs. And when we look ahead, we plan to establish deeper connection and collaboration with Korean financial institution and uh, to with all this enterprises level, we, we could jointly develop innovative products suitable for the local market. And we also hope to contribute to the development of the Korean crypto ecosystem and based on our past experience and our future vision uh, together. I thank you. Last, could you oh. say anything to the Korean crypto retail users? Okay, um, I'm really glad to share the same vision and we are lucky to enjoy this uh, unpredictable unpredictable growth for the whole market. Uh, I'm one of one of you guys. I'm the trader, I'm an investor, and also I really I'm be optimistic to the whole future for the crypto market and just join us and let's be together and to grow uh, for Hashkey and for all of them. Thank you so much, Tony. 네, 오늘은 해시키 에콜랩스의 대표님인 케이 님과 함께 인터뷰를 나누어 보았습니다. 블록 미디어 구독자님들께 정말 좋은 정보가 됐으면 주... 겠다는 마음으로 인터뷰를 진행했습니다. 어, 계속 블록미디어 구독해주시고 좋아요도 한 번씩 눌러주시기 바랍니다. 감사합니다. 블록미디어의 정윤재였습니다. 음.